be talking about all the weight that Christina lost, but a lot of us get into trouble with things like pecan pie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Chips and salsa, mindlessly, right? Uh, chili, okay. <laughs> well, it sounds more like a guilty pleasure than part of a healthy meal plan, but one fellow is putting a surprising twist on these comfort food favorites. Here to dish on the details, please. Albert Schweitzer fellow, Maggie Raber, you just saw her before the break. foods here. I want to talk about the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship. This is one of those things that's going on in our community with so many different groups that really are adding benefit to our, our community. That's right. So the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship is named after Nobel Peace Prize winner Albert Schweitzer. And what it basically is, is a group of students that get the support to implement these community service projects for a whole year. Okay. And your project was? So my project, I teach healthy cooking classes to diverse communities all around Houston. And so what I'm really trying to do is teach people that they don't have to use lots of packaged foods to make healthy meals. Right, but it's convenient. It is convenient, but there's a lot of extra sugar. Hey, that's funny. We'll come up with all kinds of excuses. But all yeah. kinds of excuses. But, you... but the extra sugar, the extra salt, the extra fat, not to mention the dyes and other additives, you really just don't need all of that stuff. Right. Uh, but we think if it's, if it's for sale, then it's, it's edible. But it doesn't mean that we need to be eating it. Okay, there's more information out there today than ever before, whether you're on the internet or whatever, that tells us how to eat. What are we doing wrong? Well, sometimes it's having too much information is the thing that you're doing wrong. As I sort of mentioned, you know, I'll have, you know, little children being like, so what about coconut oil? Should I use coconut oil? And I, I mean, just kind of getting all that health yeah. buzz, people well, get really confused about what actually is healthy. Also understanding, yes, who, who is marketing something to you. I exactly. remember when fat became the evil thing, I think it was like the late 90s, we went, fat is what makes you fat, which fat is not what makes you fat, right? Mm. And I remember seeing on a can of soda, it said a no fat food. <laughs> As opposed to saying this is what makes you fat, right? Yeah. Because right? all the sugar and stuff. Okay, so let's take some of the things that we get into trouble with because we either eat mindlessly or whatever and how to kind of tweak it down a little bit. So we're not cutting it out of our diet, those comfort foods, but we're just, you know, dialing it down a bit. Dialing it down, and uh, these are extreme examples of super healthy favorites, but you can make any of these small changes okay. in your kind of daily cooking. All right, I, I want to see how you work out the chips being a little healthier. <laughs> well, I made those from tortillas. I baked them with okay. um, just a little extra kind of spray olive oil. Okay. And then I added spices instead of salt. So you kind of oh, get this okay. like crispy, crunchy chip. You feel that crunch, mm -hmm. but without all that extra salt or that packaging. And this is a great thing that you can get kids or your loved one that doesn't know how to cook to help with. You just this oven really out of the oven. Right, now this is really good. This is really good. And I made a mango salsa. So salsa, Texans love. You have it mm -hmm. at the game, you have it at parties, but barely anybody makes it themselves. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're all excited now. Look, but I'm going to back up to this. You can try after. Because this is still a carb. Mm -hmm. It just don't work that way in your body, but you've removed some of the things that make it not such a great deal. That's right. And these tortillas are actually half corn, half wheat. Oh. So if you can't do whole corn tortillas, some people are just like emotionally, they don't like it. That's mm -hmm. fine. But try the half and half because corn is a whole grain and these can be really good and crunchy and rich. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Really good. And of course this right here. And this is, I love when you, when you mix certain things together, if there's a vegetable you don't like, mm -hmm. you throw in another one that, like that mango has a great strong sweet flavor. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it hides some things if you don't like a certain vegetable. So mix, try mixing things together if you think you don't like something. Absolutely. And this is another way to really get children to kind of branch out when you mix things with fruit. Sometimes they'll like mangoes, but they're like, oh, I don't like tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Blending it in. All right, chili. That's right. So I do the chili cook-off for MD Anderson's Children's Cancer Hospital uh -huh. every year. Uh -huh. um, and I've been doing it with my Schweitzer Fellowship. I teach classes and kind of chili is really popular. And one of the things that I do... Okay, what do you do here? So what I did here is I actually, there's only half a pound of beef in this entire Thing of chili. I really filled in with mm. vegetables and fiber rich pinto beans, and so you end up with that rich flavor and the chili flavor, yeah. but you don't have as much actual meat, and this is quite low fat, just olive oil, super lean meat. Yeah veggies. And it's interesting because at one point we would pretty much, and I grew up in other countries around the world, they use meat to season with, but it wasn't like this huge T-bone thrown on the plate. Exactly. So we kind of look at it as that is our, you know, it's more than the size of the palm of our hand. We have this huge slab of meat, but this is a way, I'm not missing it. I'm not missing You're it. Not you missing don't have it, a huh? whole thing full of, full of meat, and I'm a meat lover. So, okay. Now, seriously now. <laughs> Now, what did you do to save this? Now, pecan pie, 
I usually get when I'm when I'm doing. Y'all need to eat breakfast next time before you come. <laughs> When I'm doing my Schweitzer classes, I often get pecan pie. Right. <laughs> Taste test. All right, come down here, sir. Come on. Come, come on. on. All right, so what did you do to this one? So for this one, this actually is a pecan pie with no corn syrup. This is, um, yes, there's yes, pureed yes. dates uh -huh. and maple syrup, and then a whole wheat and oat crust. Okay, so see, you like it? Heaven. Yeah, she Heaven. used... Here, you go sit down and eat your pie. So use the pureed dates instead. I use the pureed dates instead, which are full of fiber. But I have to say, I have a big tip. Big tip. Wait, wait, big pie. tip. Can I big tip? My, I'm sharing now. My big tip for pecan pie, if you have a grandma's recipe and you're like, my pecan pie is the one, I'm using corn syrup, whatever, I totally get that. Just use a smaller pan. Use the thin uh. pan. Fill it up with pecans, and then you don't have that big, thick sugar layer. You just have a little layer. You get all that sticky sweetness and then healthy fats from the pecans. You know what? You're using that dates, because I'm not a big fan of dates, that tastes just like a regular right pecan right? pie. And yes. olive oil, no butter in there. Okay. All in, all good. Thank you, very much. Thank you so much for having me. And for more information on the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship Program or Maggie's Research, just log on to Great Day Houston.